Hey everybody, it's Pete A. Turner, executive producer and host of the Break It Down Show. I am excited to present today's episode with Dana Commandator, or Commandatory, depending on how fancy you are. Dana is currently a contestant headed into the semifinals of the Great American Baking Show. So here's the thing. Okay, so if you've seen the Great British Baking Show or the Great American Baking Show, you don't need to be caught up. For those of you who don't, uh, tomorrow, Dana's episodes will come out. We don't know what happens if she gets through the semifinals into the finals. Hopefully she does. But what it is, is it's regular people. Dana is an ad exec selling, I think it's tacos and also bakes. It's her hobby. It's her passion. So she tried out for the show, got on. And now weeks and weeks later, she's still there. And I thought it would be great to have her on. Oh, by the way, former guest. Michael Broderick, who's an actor, you've seen him in tons of things, is her husband. And so Michael sits in as co-host, and I just, I cannot get enough. First off, I love Dana. I love Michael. I love who they are. They are 100% what you see and experience. That's who they are. It's They're just great people, and I really... I really enjoyed sitting down with them, and I hope that that comes across the show more than anything else. The stories aside, just my true, and I think combined, our true pleasure in sitting down and enjoying Yes, Yes, Dana baked for us. She made some palmiers, and I, I just love this episode. I'm super excited to present it. I don't want to go on and on about it. You're going to listen to it and have a great time. I'm positive because Dan is just so damn likable and Michael's is so wonderful. And the Great British Baking Show and the American British Baking Show are just such beautiful shows. You guys really should watch these things. I don't endorse a lot of TV shows because I don't watch a lot of TV. I absolutely watch these baking shows. 2020, big things are coming up for the show. The Prison Chronicles are deep in post-production. We already have uh, episode one and two pretty much done, minus the music. Uh, I'm working on episode three this week. We're really making big, big progress. Look forward to that. Here's how you can support the show. We have shirts on sale at breakitdownshow.com. You can go there, and there's two different options. There's the Macedonian Sun flag shirt. And then there's also the standard Break It Down Show shirt. That's a great way to support the show. Allows me to buy new gear, keep things fresh, maybe even buy an ad every now and then. That's a great way to support the show. The other thing that I'm going to ask you about is it is the new year. Your charitable contributions each and every month. I would be honored if you would consider Save the Brave as your charitable location. Each and every month you can donate. It'll come out like a subscription, $10, $15, $25, $100, whatever it is that you can afford, we will put it to work. Savethebrave.org, that is my charity of choice, and I appreciate all of you for considering that. All right, let's get to it. Dana, Commandator, on the Break It Down Show. Lions Rock Productions. This is Jay this Moore. This is Greg Proops. This is Jordan Harbinger. This is Dexter from The Offspring. This is Nathan this is East. This Sebastian Younger. This is Rick Morales. This is Stuart Copeland. This is Mick Gillette. This is Andy Summers. Hey, this is Scott Baxter. This is Gabby Reese. This is Rob Bell. Hey, this is John Leon Guerrero. Hey, and this is Pete A. Turner. This is Dana Commandator, and we are listening to The Break It Down Show. Yeah, we're here at, actually, uh, your husband and you all live in the same house, and I've been here before, because I've recorded with Michael, who's sitting in as well. Love it. I'm here today, too. Yes. And that's Michael Michael Broderick. Yeah, (laughs) Michael Broderick is not the star of this episode. You are. (laughs) Because you're on on one of my favorite things. So my uh, my girlfriend and I watched the Great British Breaking Show, which Mm -hmm. I imagine that you've watched, too. And now there is, and has been, the American Great Baking Show. Yep. Is that the name right? Like it's the Great American Baking Gosh, Show, okay. and it's the holiday edition. And yep, the holiday they, they only do a holiday edition now. Yeah. And so, okay, so you're on the show, and the show is currently playing, and when everybody hears this, the semifinals are about to happen. They'll yes. happen like the next day. So this is exciting. Um, tell us everything. Like, How did you, <laughs> how did you get into like, how Were you always a baker? Uh, I've always been a baker. Have I always been like a voracious baker, like a crazy baker? No, that's probably been the past, let's say five or six years, but I've always loved to bake and cook since I was a little kid. And I've spent the past, I don't know, probably been baking for over 42 years. And I've probably, um, made more mistakes than you can ever possibly imagine, but learned a lot. Yeah, I'm terrible at baking. Um, <laughs> I make what I call peat cookies, where I just take whatever's there. Like it could be a pack of uh, instant oatmeal right. and some butter, and you slow things in there. And then whatever, however they come out, they're going to taste good. They're always going to taste good. You yeah. put butter, sugar, right. flour together, and you're going to have something good. Hey, this is Pete Day Turner from the Break It Down Show, checking in real quick to ask you this. 
John, Scott, and I all support Save the Brave with our time, our location, our effort, and our money. Each month, we give a small amount. Do the same with us. Go to SaveTheBrave.org, click on the Donate tab, pick an amount that you want to come out each month, and they will handle all the rest. I stand behind these folks. Thank you so much. Let's get back to the show. Flower together, and you're going to have something good. So you're watching the the British version of the show. But if everybody, if everybody doesn't know, you guys should go on Netflix and watch the... It's got a couple different names, but the Great British Baking Show is the thing the you great, want to find. The Great British Baking Show in America, and I believe in England, it is the Great, great British Bake Off. Right, okay. And it's just fantastic, and you get these great people. My favorite example is the one guy, and I'm sure you two will remember, he was like, I, I never even win the cookie contest at my church. I came in third <laughs> once. You know, and they're just the most <laughs> adorable people. There's, it's so nice. It's so different than most of the American baking shows in that, you know, it's a group of bakers, and it's all about about the baking it's not about the drama it's not about everything you know what i mean the personalities although that plays into it but it's all about the baking and it's that's why that's what separates it from all other shows it's great yeah it's not like cutthroat like a lot of other reality television is you know yeah. i like the uh, the collaborative uh, essence of it and stuff it's cool and then the british and they're always so nice and polite and when so they're not nice. they're really funny yeah. <laughs> yeah. I was going to ask you, too, because on the show, there's quite a bit of, of assistance the bakers will give one another in, mm-hmm. a, in a time of crisis. Uh, and I can't remember who did it, but on one of the recent episodes, maybe on the British one, the, the lady's cake was going to fall off of like a pedestal. Yeah. And he just dove over and saved her cake. Like that would mean potentially he wins, but it's not about that. It's about. Yeah, it's not product. about that. You want to you know, it's it's a competition, but you definitely want to you can't. It's hard to sit back and watch one of your like fellow bakers not do well. And you want to help. You don't want to give advice. Right. You want to just do what you can to help. So if something's falling, you're going to stop it from falling. Yeah. But you're not going to go over and be like, okay, you know, I think you're doing this wrong. I think you should do it this way or do that. You know what I mean? It might get you out of it. You want to help in a time of crisis, but you can't. You Obviously, you're not going to like do it for them. Well, also, <laughs> if, if the, the advice you give is wrong, then they'll be like, well, she told me to, you know, yeah. whatever. Yeah. So you got to be careful about what advice you give. So let's go back before you uh, get on the show. Mm-hmm. You're baking. Like, are you baking all the time? Is it like your yeah. go-to hobby? Yeah, it is. It's, it became like a form of therapy for me. It became like what I did to relax. I have a very creative husband. I have a very creative son. I work in advertising and I work around, I run like, you know, a huge, I work with a huge creative department. Right. So it's like I'm surrounded by all this creativity, but I've never, and I've always been a producer, but never really found my kind of creative outlet. And, um, and baking kind of fulfilled that. And I started to become much more creative in my baking. And it was also very therapeutic for me because like I started, I always talk about this. People are like, it's too much information, but I don't care. When I started going through menopause and Mm -hmm. you start like feeling like you're losing your mind and you're going through it, it's just good to get your brain working and thinking differently. So that's what baking kind of saved me. And I would wake up in the mornings and bake and bring everything to work because, you know, it's like you make people happy when you bake and you get addicted to that it was kind of like do you ever watch friends Mm -hmm. and monica on friends when she started making candy for all the neighbors and then she couldn't stop making it because she thought that's what you know people liked her because of it it's you do kind of get stuck in that kind of crazy (laughs) mindset for other reasons yes and you and my husband loves my baking so unfortunately yeah how does that deal with you because you know you have a job where you've got to be in front of camera yeah and i have i have a i have a wicked sweet tooth uh-huh. So, uh, yeah, I just do, you know, I try to keep working out like all the time. I just hold it over the treadmill for him and I let it like in every, do. you know, <laughs> 15 minutes you can have a right, bite. I get a bite. <laughs> and I'm eating some of your cookies right now that you made. My pommiers. Cookies. Yeah, pommiers are great. Yeah. So you, you find that you love this, but how does, is there like a, a particular bake that you did? Like, oh my gosh, this... I want to continue to make poppy seed almond crusted cakes the rest of my life. Or is there is there a moment or a pastries. season? Pastries. Pastries. Okay. I feel that way about pastries. I grew up in New Jersey and it was, you know, an Italian American household. Right. And what you did was you brought pastries to people's houses. Yeah. You know, and every time you had a holiday, you celebrated with pastries. And they were elusive because nobody made them. Everybody, you went and bought them. And when we moved out to California... It was a very different atmosphere. People d- don't entertain as much at home. People go out and meet and then they go back mm-hmm. home. And and you don't have the same like pastry selection. So I started to make the pastries that I fell in love with as yeah. a kid yeah. when I was here. And yeah. my parents live with us and they're very old school Jersey. 
you know, I just wanted to recreate that feeling for holidays and like things that, you know, Mike grew up with. I wanted to recreate that. And that's what kind of got me hooked on it. It's like, what were the things that you had as a kid that made you smile and gave like an emotional connection to food? Mm -hmm. And that's what really is the thing that I'm always searching for. So this is a little bit off topic, but it's all baking. So it's on topic. But mm -hmm. when you translate what the heck they're saying over there in, you know, Great Britain, mm -hmm. you know, they say sloth and they say uh, compote and yes. <laughs> everything's different. A biscuit is not a biscuit, no, you know, it's a cookie. so do they translate that and be like, oh, by the way, when we say this, you guys m make sure you're actually not making a biscuit and gravy you're making, you know, well, it's. It Although it is a British show originally, the yeah. people that are doing the American version are Americans and right. they shoot it over there because you've got the tent and it's so iconic and right. you know what I mean? It creates this atmosphere. So a lot of the people that you're working with are Americans and understand it. It's when, and you know, there's Paul Hollywood, mm -hmm. who is the judge who is, who is English. Right. And then you have Sherry Yard, who's an American pastry chef, a phenomenal American Boy. pastry chef. And she's from Brooklyn, New York. And you know, she gets it. So, you know, she, so when you're, you know, you're, if you're worried that Paul might not understand something, you've got Sherry there to interpret it. If you've done a good job, you know, yeah. you've also got Sherry there to call you, you know, call BS on whatever you're trying yeah. to say to Paul, which is kind of cool too. Yeah. It's really neat. I like what she brings to the show. The, uh, the, the previous female guests on the other show have, have been fantastic. You mm -hmm. know, they have, they bring their own life and everything, but she is a legitimate, like knows her stuff down to the detail baker. You, I mean, to be in her presence and to get to hear feedback. I mean, I was there solely for the feedback. Because, you know, when you bake and you bake at home all the time and you bring it into work and everybody, they like it. They're like, oh, it's yeah. great. And you, you screw it up and they don't care. Yeah. Right, Mike? Like, I'll it's eat like, anything. He'll eat, he'll eat it all the time. <laughs> that ain't that burned. Yeah. <laughs> and it's like, or if Black. it doesn't look yeah. right, it's okay. So this is usually the first time that you're being told that you're not that good. Yeah. Do you know what I'm saying? And that yeah. you've got a lot to learn yeah. and you're hearing it from two people that you respect and, you know, at a completely different level and it, and you want to hear what they have to say. So the last thing I wanted to hear was it was never going to happen, but, oh, that's perfect. You don't have to change anything. You know what I mean? It's like, you want to hear, you know, this is what happened. You added too much sugar to this, or this is, you know, you're, you have too many dry ingredients. You need more hydration. And you know, I've learned so many things and I don't know, Mike, what, like, don't you think since I've been home, I'm, Oh, even you came back, you came back from England, a different baker. Right. Absolutely. But you were, you were telling me that there's so much feedback that you get and some of it's very particular yep. that you don't see, they don't show sure. on, on the episode, yeah. you know, it's, it's all edited, edited out. But. Yeah. yeah. And that's the boot camp that you, um, you just appreciate more than anything. And that was my favorite thing. Like I yeah. just, you know, so, you know, I'll go into work some days and people say to me, I don't think it's fair that Paul said this or, you know, Sherry was like, you know, she criticized that. And I'm like, that's, but it was true. It was right. You know what I mean? Yes, mm. I, I did put too much orange, fake orange flavor in my chocolate orange cake. You know, it's because you're nervous and you don't know what to do and you yeah. want to make sure. So it's like, they're a hundred percent right. I, I would, there was nothing that I disagreed with. The so feedback. they're not judging on like artistic style. Like if you go for something, they can assess it on the technique specifically as opposed to, oh, well, there's too much almond on these. Like, you know, maybe it is an almond heavy thing or something. Mm -hmm. Is that right? Like it's. Yeah. But, it, you know, but you'll go overboard. I mean, you're there's such yeah, a overboards overboard. Yeah, yeah. Overboards overboard. And when you're trying to do stuff like you learn so much about baking soda and baking powder. Yeah. And if you have too much of it and they could taste it. Mm. And they and their palates are unbelievably refined. And, you know, it Mike might taste something. He'll be like, yeah, uh, it mm -hmm. tastes a little salty or, you know, it's not this. But then, you know, then they start explaining to you how to balance the acid with the with the, you know, with the baking. soda with the liquid, like all these different things and what yeah. brings it out. And it's just it's fascinating. Yeah. I think and one you can of the really nerd out on it. <laughs> one of the critiques. You know, it wasn't even a critique. It was a question like, what temperature are you going to bake that at? And then the contestant didn't know. Like, she had an answer, but she didn't you, know Are why. you talking about Sarita? Yeah, when yeah, he asked was, her about the cookies? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, that was, that was classic. I mean, because that happens all the time. All the time. Like, so what temperature are you going to bake at? And you say it, and then they either slightly tilt their head, mm -hmm. or they don't say anything. And then all of a sudden, you're, you're, you're going... 
okay, I totally screwed that up. I'm going to change it. And it was great because Sarita went down first, uh-huh. or I think she went up first, and then she went down and like yeah. tried to settle somewhere. And that happens more often than not. You just, and a lot of times when they call something out like that, mm-hmm. they're trying to give yeah. you a hint. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, think about that, and you're like, oh. One of the things I've noticed too is certain, like, people take adventurous choices with flavors, and I'd, that's neat when they make it, but a lot of times they just don't pay off, like the Earl Grey flavors and a lot mm-hmm. of these non traditional flavors. It just doesn't always seem to work. And you said you were kind of middle of the road, like, I just want to be, you know, right down the middle. Yeah, I'm not into the latest food trends. Right. Like, I don't really follow, like, I, I love traditional flavors. And there's mm-hmm. a reason why people like, you know, apple in certain things right. and doing stuff. And when you can pair it with something that's slightly out of the box, but really, you know, brings out the flavor and is really like good to it, then it's, then it's a fun thing to do, but you can't, I like, I was never comfortable doing something really weird. Like, you know, Mike tasted a ton of different things that I practiced with and he would taste stuff and he'd be like, no, you know, mm-hmm. it's like, just stick to what you know. Yeah. And Surprisingly, a lot of the stuff that I would make on a regular basis, it's not incredibly popular. Right. So when I did do certain flavors, it wasn't like, oh my gosh, this is too boring. You know what I mean? I, yeah. So it was, it was kind of, it kind of worked out for me, my, my flavor profiles. But like the rose waters and the charcoal flavors, that's just, yeah, you know, rose water. I don't, you know, yeah, I'm, I'm not with a, you. I don't I, like when, when they say that, I, you know, I try, I'm not judging because I'm out there, but I'm like, oh, that's not the best choice. No, but I think the judges are really good. They may not like a flavor, but they could, they're not going to necessarily, or at least I don't think they do, yeah. <laughs> knock you down because you haven't chosen um, a flavor that they like. But yeah. if you've paired it with something and it brings something out and doesn't overpower, they, you know, they will appreciate that and they'll let you know. So I've, I've seen Paul be surprised by something, something where yeah. like when he first goes up, so what are you making today? And he's like, are you sure about that? Blah, blah, blah. You know, cause that, mm-hmm. that sounds like it might eliminate yeah. the other thing or whatever. And then he's like ple- pleasantly surprised at, at the end result, you know? Yeah. But they'll always admit when they're, or they'll say when they're pleasantly surprised, which yeah. is kind of cool. Then you feel good about it. Now, are you baking for their palate though? Like, are you getting a sense for what they like and you sort of eh, towards it a little bit? No, I think, um, you know, you, you know what you're going to bake for for the signature bake and the showstopper when mm-hmm. you go in there. And you're not going to really change it up. I mean, if Paul and Sherry are standing in front of you and they, they're they like, I can't believe you're going to mix two, these two ingredients together, it, you could just decide to not do it. You know what I mean? And just leave one of them in there and do it. But to like kind of abort your game plan as you're going into it really yeah. screws with your head. Yeah. So you, I mean, you go ahead with it. The prep work that she did beforehand was, was just... Yeah. Un, it was unbelievable. Can you talk about the timeline? I mean, you find you're going to get on the show, and then obviously you're already a baker, but then you go into baker crazy, but then you go into production. Now, there they can, I'm assuming, go home and practice and work on things. But how Yeah, does the work? English version and the English show that they, they, um, they go every weekend. So they go home during the week, and they get to practice their bakes at home. We go there, and we are in, you know, a small, we're in an awesome, like, little, they put us up in Mm -hmm. these great little kind of kitchenettes and you practice there and you're away from your family and your friends and your job and everything. Um, And you just kind of, you know, have to make do and it's a very intense period. So Mm -hmm. it's, it much is very tighter different. schedule too. Yeah. Much tighter schedule and you're filming, you know what I mean? Like every couple days and it's, Mm -hmm. but I, I, I think it's just awesome. I mean, when do you ever get the opportunity to do something you love yeah. at that high of a level, that intensely? You know, it's it's like a once in a lifetime you thing. You can see that you're having a great time. I had so and you were not freaking out like you're middle of the road. She's thing. a yeah. rock. Seriously. Have you seen her on the show? <laughs> yeah, she's no, just it's... like she, nothing flusters her. She She's like so level. Uh, you know, different people have different, you mm-hmm. know, uh, uh, personalities and are affected differently. Dan is just like. Yeah, just like flat line all the way across. I yeah, love which it. I don't know if that's such a Rock. great thing, but it, um, but it's you know, because I, I really, I didn't know what to expect when I got there, and you know, now I'm going to be in the semifinals, and it's like watching and going back through that yeah. mentally and getting there. You're just so excited to be there, and it's like you just don't. It, it's, I love it. it's just so great. It's I've never had that it's much fun. Great to watch. Just everybody is just so. It's just fan. Everybody should watch. 
all of the baking shows, the, the American one and the British one. Because, yeah, what you're saying comes through on the camera. It's, that's part of the genius of what they've got figured out. Yeah, that formula works really well. And you've get, you get a group of people together. I mean, day one, you, we all land there, and we're all on different flights, and we yeah. get there. And all of a sudden, you realize you're in a room with 10 other people that yeah. are just as nerdy as you are about <laughs> baking. And, you, you know, there are people that you would never think that you have anything in common with. And all of a sudden, you are like BBFs, best yeah. baker friends. You know, and we still, all of us still talk and we chat on a WhatsApp chat all the time because mm -hmm. no, nobody else wants to go into such detail yeah. about what we're doing. So um, it's so much fun. And it's like, that's one of the most wonderful things about this whole experience is that group of people. And, you know, it's like my husband had it when he was in the military and he's had it when he's been in bands. I've never, you know, I played soccer and played some sports, but yeah. never really had that kind of camaraderie. And it was, it's really nice. Advertising can be a pretty intense business. There's serious deadlines. There's serious consequences oh, when yeah. the, when those burgers don't sell or whatever it is. <laughs> Do you think that's part of what, tacos I mean, in my case? Tacos. <laughs> Perfect. Thank you. God bless you for that. Yeah. Um, is that part of, you know, and also your maturity level, like some of the younger folks just haven't been put under that kind of scrutiny before that? I think that definitely plays a yeah. role in it. I have, um, you know, when you, I've had a very nice life. Like I, you know, I haven't had a ton of adversity and I haven't had a lot of things happen and I'm very appreciative of that. But I've also, you know, grew up around there's always been a lot of drama you know whether it's friends or different things yeah. and it's like I'm just I've always shied away from that I don't like to be the center of attention mm -hmm. I don't even think I went to my own baby shower did I yeah I don't <laughs> think I oh you mean for for Michelangelo yeah yeah, yeah when no. I you know when, like I I'm just not into things like that <laughs> mm -hmm. um and it's and there's nothing wrong with like right. being the center of, of attention or like doing that because I think it's great. But I've always been on the production side. Mm -hmm. And usually I like to set up things. I like to kind of produce people's fun. Yeah. And I got to do this. And being so into production and being on set all the time, I got to marry like two different worlds. And I would love to. Like my my next dream job is to produce the show. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. I would love to like. Oh, you would do a great job. Go, you know what I mean? Go back and do something like that because it's just so much. The atmosphere is like, the energy is fantastic. I liked how they introduced you in, in, in the first episode. Where it's high powered ad exec from Los <laughs> Angeles. <laughs> yeah. Like a mandatory. It's fun. Yeah. I love advertising is very stressful. Yeah. And it's a lot of fun too. So yeah. you get like the best of both worlds. So it's like those kind of deadlines and pressure. I'm used to it. I'm used to all of that. So get, so prepping for the show and having deadlines and man, yeah. make sure you meet them. It's just, I've been doing that for over 20 years. When you're in your kitchenette and you're whipping up all your stuff, practicing and you're mm -hmm. on site, uh, are you forcing your food down poor British people's faces? You're like, you have to eat this donut and tell me if it's good. No. You, you come out all point, tense and you're covered in flour and everything. <laughs> no. I you, bellhop. Get over here. <laughs> Well, I did actually, the cleaning people in the room, I'd left them food every day. Like I would like, you know, I got to know them and leave them a note when I would say, you know, please cha change my garbage because mm -hmm. you would, you would want their, or your bin, you yeah. know what I mean? Your rubbish, your rubbish. you want your rubbish taken yeah. out every day. And, you know, I would always leave a note like, please, you know, these are for you folks or whatever. And they would take them every day and eat them. And they were very appreciative of it. Well, that's but great. I knew what I was going for at that point, And mm -hmm. it was just that it was all about consistency. Okay at that point so yeah. it was just working on it and then are you studying up on paul's book i like on the exotic things like i, I remember it's a thing i had in germany i was in the army and it was like a bunch of pancakes stacked up into a cake mm -hmm. and i'm like holy shit i've had that thing but i didn't i still don't know the name of it but i, I know forget the I name see, of it but i know what you're talking yeah, about and it was yeah like, it's like a, a crepe cake yeah exactly yeah, a crepe yeah. cake and i think it was the uh, so the, for people who haven't seen it the, the middle round is like a surprise the round, technical like, challenge yeah surprise yeah. you're making this thing you've probably never made before or even uh -huh. heard before and there's the directions are Make crepes, pack, put them in a stack and, and cover them in sauce. Yeah, know, or like. make Swiss meringue. Yeah. You know, there'll be something like a, yeah. a, like something like that. And you, they will tell you, they'll give you, you know, certain elements of it, but they'll just say, make this. Mm -hmm. Or they'll say, bake at 325 degrees. Yeah. For, not for how long. Not for how long. Not, not. And what to do. So why don't, you know, yeah. so why don't we break, break it down? <laughs> how each episode, see what I did there? How <laughs> each episode is, is uh, presented. Like, well, it's presented, you start with something like in the first episode, it was cake week. And you have um, your signature, 
and mm-hmm. they decided to give you a brief which was an olive oil cake so you had to make an olive oil forward cake and you can introduce any other flavors you want to it the second challenge was um, a total surprise and it was an angel food cake mm. with a passion fruit curd channel going through the whole center that that was a sherry yard recipe with um you know fruit decorated on top and white chocolate and stuff so we you had no idea and you had to bake this and yeah. everybody gets the same ingredients yeah, everybody gets the same thing and everybody gets the same instruction and you don't get a curd you have to make the curd you have while to make the yeah. curd yourself and yet and they'll say make passion fruit curd uh-huh. and you're like okay i know i've got 250 <laughs> milliliters of passion curd puree here but what do i do you know yeah. and you you thank goodness i know how to make curd or you know how to make a pudding or know how to make a creme pat a you know a pastry cream yeah um and then the last one is a showstopper where you have to create something that would be the centerpiece of a party typically and mine was a chocolate gateau yeah, everybody had a chocolate you know gateau and it was like well what do you you know, what flavors you're going to introduce, how you're going to decorate it, how you're going to make it look like a centerpiece thing. So it, um, the technical challenge scared the crap out of everyone. Yeah. My advantage in the technical challenges, which is not really an advantage because I'm not really that great at technical <laughs> challenges because I'm terrible at following recipes on hey, the fly. Fifth place. <laughs> um, yeah. You know, I would, uh, so it was that I knew. I knew a little bit too much. Like mm. you, you kind of have a bit of information, which could be dangerous. You know, when it came to last week, when it was pastry and we had to do the short crust pastry, um, the the pork pies. Yeah. I was like, I know it has to be warm. So I was working with it warm. And I was like, and it wasn't until the end I realized, no, it has to cool. Yeah. It has to cool to a certain temperature to be malleable enough to roll on this freaking dolly. And you're sitting yeah. there and you're like, son of a bitch, I figured it out right at the end. But you can't go back. You don't have enough time to do it. But yeah. Um, yeah, you were disappointing in that challenge. Yes, I was honest. very. Yes, that's okay. I disappointed myself. Still, still a star baker. I still, still got star, star baker, baker that baker on pastry that week. Crazy! Yep. Look at you. I mean, okay, so star baker people, for people who are listening. Yeah, <laughs> it's and it makes me emotional. I'm just thinking about it. Like the, they always show like the the, the pull out of the person, and they'll they'll show like you'll call Mike, and you'll be like, I want star baker, and then yeah. you're like, Holy shit! What? Wow! You know, <laughs> I think and that's why they didn't use it. No, no, no. <laughs> they didn't do that with Dan because I was like, what? Yeah. <laughs> but what a neat moment for the both of you to have that happen. It that was, awesome. was, I mean, it, you know, I think they used the soundbite on the show where I said, it seems really strange to be so proud of an accolade, yeah. you know, about baking, but it really is. Yeah. Well, you work really, feeling. really hard. You do. And it's in that payoff. And it was during pastry week, which is my favorite thing. I mean, you yeah. hear people all the time, like bread's my thing, cakes are my thing. And then they totally yeah. screw up be- for some unknown reason because the tent's a strange place. And to for me to get Star Baker during pastry week meant so much to me. I want to get back to the tent being a strange place, but I want to ask you yeah. about this whole process. Yeah. Like, obviously... She bakes well, and you're happy with it. Whose idea was it to go on? I mean, you said before off mic that you wanted to do this, but what was your role in this whole decision process? Cheerleader. Yeah. That was it, man. Yeah. Uh, I mean, actually, my my position in this whole thing has just been literally just cheering her on. You yeah. know, trying out things that, that you hear, eat this. Okay. Yum, 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 yum. Okay. You know, whatever. But There was a moment, I mean, when, when I was practicing, I think, that I, I just came to you, and I was like, Mike, I don't know if I could do this. That's true. Yeah. And yeah. you were like, you can absolutely do this. Yeah. What was yeah. what was your doubt about? I was just tired. Mm. It was, you know, I have, you know, a 17-year-old son who's a senior in high school. I have, you know, we have a big house. We have three dogs. I have a really high-pressure full-time job. Right. You know, and it was like trying to stay up till after midnight, just practicing and, you know, just doing stuff. Yeah. Like, you're not doing it. For the love of it right now. Well, actually, you are, because there's no way you can do but any you do of have, that you, if you, you didn't love it. You but. owe everybody to be prepared. Yes. And the kind of person you are, I can already tell, like, you're not, you're not going to let that. I'm not going to half-ass it. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Underprepared, this is not going to be the problem. No. Okay. So it's it was a lot of pressure, and I always... You know, my brothers, when I was little, they always have this running joke with me that I trip at the finish line, because yeah. I've never been super competitive like I just, you know, I was in an ice skating race once and I just slowed down at the end and let somebody else win it. My brothers were like, what the hell is wrong with you? <laughs> and, um, you know, they they were my cheerleaders when yeah. I was younger, which was great. And, um, you know, I've always had an incredibly supportive family. Mm. My parents, both my mom and my dad and my brothers have always been great. And they, um, 
but it and I wasn't even competitive with the other bakers while I was there I was it was all about being like well, how far can you push yourself are any of the bakers really competitive with one another and you don't gotta get specific but. yeah no I, I think I'm sure they are I'm sure there there were because I think people are very competitive right. by nature and I um, that that was the hardest thing for me to be is competitive against another person mm-hmm. I, I'd much rather compete against myself so what does that mean that means just pushing yourself and being better what does that mean it means tons of practice. It means okay. making sure, you know, the whole 10,000 hours. You yeah. never, people have talent. Yeah. And then there's practice that goes along with that. And the, even the most talented people aren't going to get anywhere unless they put in the work. And doing that work is, it just, it just puts you in a really zen place. And it just shows you accomplishing something is just it's why we're alive it's why we're here if you're not going to try to accomplish something and leave a legacy or do something for your children or for your family or for whomever you know what i mean then why then why are you living life and if you have to take risks what about some of these techniques that you have to practice just to get the feel for them like rolling things Mm -hmm. knowing you know what technique works for this specific thing like i mean do you set up your training schedule and say these are the things i'm going to make like you already know obviously you make a great napoleon what a great compliment (laughs) you got on that how incredible what would you say the best thing she's ever eaten in the tent so far so far yeah. Yep. Well, you got to say so yeah. far. No. Yeah. yeah. It was that was that was a great compliment, but there's still room for improvement, mm-hmm. and that's the thing that I love. And what I've been practicing all week is pastry. Yeah. You know, I go back and I and I find different recipes, and you know, right now, um, Sherry Yard has a great book. It's mm-hmm. you know the secrets of baking, and it's like you you go through that and you just read the different recipes, and then you could take that and just do whatever you want with it so like now i'm working on a a few different desserts with puff pastry that's different and finding different ways to make puff pastry and yeah my puff pastry was great on that day yeah but how can you consistently make great puff pastry yeah let's go back let's go back into the tent then and talk about that because the tent has pressure you also you know you can't be so focused on your cooking that you're not aware that you're on a TV show. You right. know, you have to like, you have to be entertaining. Mm-hmm. You have to pull your head up and say, oh, yes. Yeah, no, it's great. And then the, yeah. the hosts who we have not even talked about the hosts at all. There, there's a lot of things going on in there. And the weather can be wacky, you know, oh, super yeah. hot, super cold. Yep. So talk about the tent and what it does to baking. So the tent is a magical place. When you walk in, you know, you feel like you're in, if you were, if you were English, you walked into Wembley Stadium and you're about yeah. to play a World Cup qualifier or something you know and it's like um and the first time I just you know I put that apron on and you put you know you pull it over your head and then you tie it around your waist and you put your hands on there on the bench and you look up and you're like holy shit I'm yeah. in the tent you know what I mean? <laughs> and it's like but I don't have you, it's this weird feeling because I didn't have Mike to turn around because he's the one person that like would have understood what it meant for me to be standing there yeah you know what I mean and like my family and you don't have that support and you're really by yourself so you're just internalizing all of this awesomeness and then um Emma Bunton and Spice Adams who are the hosts they walk in and they're just so energetic and lovely and just make you feel so comfortable and it's amazing and the production team is just out of this world and the culinary staff and every and you're like this is so cool and this energy and everything's buzzing around you and you're like, pinch me. You know what I mean? I'm here and you want to film it all, but you can't. And, um, and then Paul and Sherry walk in and you're like, Oh shit, it's go time. And they don't really interact with you a ton because they can't, you know what I mean? They want to be as impartial as they possibly can and judge the food and do whatever. But it's with those few moments that you get them and they're standing there and, you know, you've got Paul's blue eyes, you've got Sherry's blonde hair, and you've got all of their expertise just coming at you. And it's just, it's fantastic. When you're staring at those two mm-hmm. and the camera's there, is the camera even there for you or are you completely in that no, moment? I don't, the camera I don't care about. I'm used yeah. to, like, the camera never bothered me whatsoever. You know, our son started his own YouTube channel early on. And, you know, we've been around the entertainment and I've always been on production and stuff. So the yeah. camera has never been like, oh, my gosh, I'm on camera. It's just, it's all about baking. I and mean, then do you get starstruck at all? Mm, I wouldn't say, I think I 
Paul and Sherry definitely put me in my place. Yeah. Meaning like I, you know, I typically am not super starstruck. I was so honored to be in their presence that yeah. I, uh, I would say I was starstruck. Yeah. And you're also in, in particular Paul, because he's been on all of the episodes, but mm-hmm. you're in his, you're in his dojo. Like that's, that's his world. He's made this thing, you know, through his personality into something that millions of people enjoy. Yeah. It's incredible. He's, he was an, um, he was amazing. I mean, Paul, he would never want anybody to know this, but he's a nice guy. Yeah. And he loves baking and he loves it. And he really, you know, both Paul and Sherry want you to improve and they want you to do well. They care. And mm-hmm. it comes through in space, you know, while you're talking to them, it just, they want to help. They want to mentor and you just have to be receptive and open to it. So when she's there and she's on production and mm-hmm. she calls you, are you just, again, cheerleading, listening? Are you like trying to say, hey, your intensity's through the roof. Back off a little bit. Go no, for a walk. Uh, I think it was, uh, there was only one time, uh, if you don't mind me sharing, where, no, where no. She, she called me and she was like, yeah, I'm, st- I'm starting to get worn down. Yeah. You know, this is really, so I don't know if I can make it, you know. Yeah. And because uh, the production schedule was really heavy. And, uh, and that was right before pastry week. Yeah, it was right before pastry week. Yeah. And I think... Had you had a, a disappointing run on something, maybe, or something you weren't as as happy as, yeah. as you wanted I, I, to be? Well, everything was, but and <laughs> and, uh, and you know she was, she, and plus she, we since the day we met, we haven't really been away from each other for oh, any real amount yeah, of time. Yeah. So we're talking about twenty, twenty one years of just yeah. always in each other's face, you know. <laughs> and she was, uh, she was far away right. for an extended period, you know, and. Um, and I think maybe just some loneliness maybe set in. She was away from our son. You know, she's mm-hmm. you know never really never been away been from away right. from right. for an extended days. period of time. Right. You know, and and how long have, was production? Can I ask that? Well, everybody was there for a month. Okay, at least. So it was you know it it was really I'm like my parents live with us. Like I'm used to having my close support ne- yeah. network around me and not having that. So like when I got Star Baker, you know, a bunch of people were like, "Oh, you were really calm," and I was like, Be- "It's." you don't it wasn't real until i told mike yeah do you know what i mean like when i called him it's like that's the sort of thing that it takes a while to hit you because you need you want your support network around you how much and if you can't talk about this that's fine we'll sure. it out. but how much can you interact with the bakers as they are eliminated are they i mean obviously they're still there they're not yeah there. you you can interact with um we all interacted all the time we spent it was like being in college again okay which i loved you yeah. know it was actually really fun and we're all so close from it and it's like so even if somebody would get eliminated you were still there i right. mean you know there's you know sally was amazing sally was um the brazilian woman who yeah. she was just so great and her energy was so great and when she got eliminated she was there in the morning saying goodbye to everybody when we would have to go there and she would be there at the end of the day when we came home How you know what i mean it was like it's like what sort of magical person is this you know what i mean lovely and it's yeah. like well it's sally yeah and you know you had you have different relationships with different people and it was so great like it, it it was a great support network, but it's still nothing like having your husband and your... In this show, as for people who haven't seen it, there's a, a bunch of cooking stations and... Benches. We call them benches. benches. Okay, yeah. benches. And as, as people are eliminated, there's more and more space, but I imagine that it just gets more intense and, and pressure filled as they're... It does. And I think uh-huh. I they actually um, aired something that I said last week when it was down to six of us, I guess it was. Mm-hmm. And it said, I said, wow, the tent's quieter today. Yeah, You know, you've got less people around and less things. And they even, you know, they remove some of the benches. So it's like there's, le- you know, there's you've got a little bit more space in between yeah. you and the bench behind you. It definitely changes it, but it just becomes more and more, you become more and more focused. This may or may not have anything to do with anything, but I've noticed that the British baking folks seem to sit on the ground in front of the oven more than the Americans do. Oh, I did all the time. Oh, okay. They just yeah. don't show it. Okay. Yeah, I did all the time. I think there's a there was a great scene where I was <laughs> where I was just squatting down you. and uh, Spice is doing <laughs> yoga behind me because I'm just intense. Like your timer watching the oven. Yeah. Because 
you know, when I'm at home and I'm baking, I've got seven other things to do. Right. I'm either changing laundry, I'm doing dishes, I'm answering a work email, you know, I'm doing all these different things. When you're there in the tent, you get to focus 100% on the bake. Yeah. So it's like, you're going to sit there and watch that oven and you're going to make sure it doesn't burn. You know what I mean? And yeah. make sure that things are happening. So it's kind of interesting. So yes, I am in front of that oven constantly. So for these, the showstopper is, is this big huge project you know i think one of yours was like a lifeguard stand made out of gingerbread yes that the right? gingerbread that yeah. was so clever and so fantastic <laughs> and so on theme for the la girl right yeah sometimes people take on enormous challenges you mm-hmm. know and they'll like try to do what appears to me to be entirely too much mm-hmm. you know like just because you can do five flips and then dive into the water doesn't mean you should do that because Ugly is ugly, you know. Right, if you're not going to do them right. Right, yeah, yeah. yeah like, so it's like, if you're going to temper chocolate, right. make sure you know how to do it. Because yeah. it's going to be worse, I think, if you attempt it and do it half ass than mm-hmm. if you, you know what I mean? And then if you, But if you can nail it and do that, then that's a great thing. It's how, so, uh, in terms of nailing it, how are the time frames? Are they realistic? Because a lot of the reality shows are like, and in 20 minutes, you know, do this thing. And it's like, not a 20 minute task. Well, I think certain things play into the theatrics, which make great TV, which right. are good. I yeah, mean, yeah. I don't know why on earth anybody would ever in five hours have to make three different cheesecakes and stack them. <laughs> <laughs> but it's a fun challenge. Yeah. And, it's, and it's testing your engineering, your building skills, you know what I mean? And how you're going to make sure that th- those cakes don't topple over. Mm-hmm. So. What is might not be 100% realistic in the real world doesn't matter because they're testing you on different things. Yeah. And it's fun. Yeah. And it's fun to see what you can do with that. And it's fun to see, you know, in that challenge, I did two different base cheesecakes, two different, you know, um, crusts and different toppings. And it's like that I could have just done two different, you know, cheesecakes and then one crust to go on both. But it's like you you want to push yourself a little bit, but you don't want to go too far that you're not going to have enough time to do it. And it seems like the folks that over decorate pay the cost because that that flavors have to be there, the bakes yeah. have to be accurate. I think they say substance over style, right? Yes, right. I would always. I'm n- never been a great decorator. I mean, uh-huh. that's Mike. That's always like a laughing. Like whenever I do something, he's like, "It's good for you," you know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> right? I mean, it's like it's, hashtag go Dana. Go. Dana. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm always going to focus on the flavors the technique and then the decoration. That's just the way that I, that's the way I, I roll when in the kitchen. <laughs> yeah. And then you're in the semifinals. We don't know what happens next because that's going to happen on the TV show, but it actually has already happened. Yeah. It's all happened. Yeah. So do you, are you able to travel to England for like the big barbecue thing in the end? No, I mean, not saying anything about anybody. Well, anybody's winning. invited. To right. come. Yeah, they invited okay. all the families to attend the the final, yeah. right? Whether they're yeah. eliminated or still in but it. But you have whatever. like a job with not a whole lot of flexibility, you know, if you're if you're doing camera things, you know, right and acting. Well, uh, if I'm working, then it's yeah. not flexible. If I'm right. not working, I'm plenty flexible. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> hey, this is Pete A. Turner from Lions Rock Productions. We create podcasts around here. And if you, your brand, or your company want to figure out how to do a podcast, just talk to me. I'll give you the advice on the right gear, the best plan, and show you how to take a podcast that makes sense for you, that's sustainable, that's scalable, and fun. Hit me up at Pete at BreakItDownShow.com. Let me help. I want to hear about it. <laughs> <laughs> what about your work? You have a high pressure advertising fancy lady job. And yeah, you... I work at a great ad agency, Deutsche Advertising, Deutsche in Los Angeles, and it's just great. And the people, I've been there for a long time. Yeah. And, um, you know, I went to my CEO uh, and my boss, the two people, to Pete and Kim at the time, and I was like, hey, I have this opportunity. Yeah. Um, what do you think? And they And they were like, go for it. Yeah. You know, we support you 100%. And they were great. So I got to, you know, I had to do some work. I kept up on my job and emails and stuff while I was away. And it was a really good distraction. Right. I remember my one, uh, one of my bosses, Brett, called me at one point to talk about a new business pitch. And it was just such a nice relief, you know, to do something, to think about something different <laughs> for five minutes and work, to go back to work for a little bit. Right. But um, yeah, they, they were, they were fantastic. They were so supportive. Yeah. But I bake for them all the time, so they, they like it. <laughs> Has your vocabulary changed at all? Like we say sloth and scone now instead of scones well, and sloths. Well, I, 
you, one of the things too, I lived in England during okay. my twenties for ah, like okay. on and off for a while. So I was very familiar and comfortable with the lexicon. Is that the right word? Sure. Sure. Yeah. Um, and Good I knew, word. and I knew certain things. So like when we had in bread week, when they were making a cob loaf, I knew what a cob loaf was. No, no I don't think anybody else did. Right. You know, not that it helped me, but it, right. you know, <laughs> but I knew what one. it was. Yeah. yeah. Right. When it was time for the queen of puddings, you know, nobody else knew what it was. I did. Yeah. Again, didn't matter. Yeah. <laughs> Hand pie didn't do you any good. <laughs> yeah. It didn't do, didn't do, didn't do me any good, but I knew what it was supposed to look like. Yeah. Things like that at least. So it did, I wasn't, you know, completely scared when I heard these things. How was the editing? How does it feel to you when you see yourself, when you see your, your awesome. peers? Is it good? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I think, you know, obviously there's, you know, we have an hour long show yeah. with commercials and the British one has an hour long show. You know, they have commercials added in like if, but it's like an hour and a half. So they right. have much more time yeah. to get to know the bakers and to build it up and whatever. But, you know, for me, it's okay because I still have all the memories of everything that happened in my head. Mm -hmm. So it doesn't even matter how it was edited. I kind of can remember it all just by watching those like key points. Yeah. Which is kind the of judging neat. seems to be pretty much on point. And when it's not, the internet explodes and people complain about certain yeah. things, but ultimately the people who deserve to, to make it to the finals seem to get there, you know, like unless you have a bad day, if you have a bad day and there's five yeah. people there, not a lot of room to have a bad day. Yeah. Did you guys feel like everything was pretty fair overall as you oh, experienced gosh, it? Oh gosh. Yeah. I thought it was incredibly fair. I thought yeah. everything was great. I thought, um, you know, it, you know, it's hard with some, it's such a privilege to be there and, you know, they are making a TV show. It's, yeah. it's important. And, you know, you are in this great position to kind of not try not to screw up. So yeah. it's like, you're just sitting there having fun with it. I mean, I had nothing but fun with the entire thing. And what was it? Paul said, it's okay to have a bad day. Just don't have the worst day. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's true. I mean, you know, it's like, I think I would call Mike and be like, well, fortunately, I, you know, I may have screwed up, but unfortunately, somebody screwed up a little bit more. Yeah. And that's what happens. Yeah. You know what I mean? It, it's if you're just thinking that you're great the whole way through and it's like, it, it's never going to do you any good. No. But all of us, all the bakers would go home and we'd all talk about our the things that we did wrong and of course. You know, learn from it. It was great. Yeah, you definitely see people improve substantially from where they were when yeah. they start if they get through enough weeks. What do we not know? What do we not from, you know, just not you've done the thing. Uh -huh. what, are we, what are we missing from what the show is? Um, you are missing out. Like, I think when you, you know, I used to watch the show be like, why did they do that? That was so stupid. Or why do you know, how come they didn't leave it in longer? Like you, you don't realize the intense pressure yeah. and the intense um, uh, just where anything could go wrong. You don't realize that, you know, you're not in, you're in a tent. You know what I mean? And you're sitting there and sometimes it's really hot yeah. and sometimes it's cold and you have to improvise and you don't realize that you may only have, you know, you you want your chocolate to set up just right. You're trying to temper it, but you're, you're probably going to have to put it in the refrigerator because of the time thing. And yeah. there's all these little things that you don't realize. You don't realize that there's an entire crew of people doing their job, running around you. It's like, and every time the camera's on a baker, you're like, oh, look how nice it is and calm. I'm like, no, there's, you know, 40 people around you making sure everything runs perfectly smoothly. And, yeah. um, but all of that can weigh on you and you just don't realize it. And being away from your family, I don't think people realize that as much yeah. that you're trying to, you know, do this in a bubble and do this by yourself. And, um, and it's just all of that pressure just weighs on you and it, you will make a mistake. And I, and I just think the other thing is it's the amount of people that I've said this to, it's like, did you even look at your recipe today? And they'd be like, no, I totally forgot. I just got in a zone and started baking. Yeah. And it's like, oh shit, you've got to remember to like, you know, check stuff off and make sure you, you know, do all that. But it's the simplest things go out of your head in the tent. As you're coming up with your showstopper, I mean, this is your moment. It might be the thing that saves you because the mm -hmm. technical, you just don't know. You don't know. In. The showstopper will, if you, right. will save you. So... Talk about how you come up with your showstopper ideas. Like, where does that come from? How do they evolve? All that. Well, they, you, you know, you put a lot of time into it and you just think, well, obviously you're making bread, right? There are, it's really, it's like how many bread recipes are there out yeah. there? There's ratios that you could play with and flavors and designs. So yeah. it's like, what, 
And when you've given a brief, so in the bread sculpture, we had to do something based on the 12 days of Christmas. Right. And you're saying to yourself, how am I going to come up with something yeah. original? And it's like, well, all right, I have a lot of tattoos. So I'm going to try it. So I was like, oh, what if I did like a traditional, um, you know, I did like a turtle dove tattoo bread. That's mm-hmm. the bread that I played with different flavors. I did a chocolate and cinnamon bread and a panda and pear bread. You know, you put those together and it my, made it look like a kind like of... a winged heart. Yeah. Kind mm-hmm. of, you know, like a traditional tattoo. Like, yeah. like a, a traditional heart with tattoo. wings, you know. And I'm never going to be, I'm not that artistic and not that creative. But I was like, at least this will be uniquely me. Yeah. So that's what I tried to do in my gingerbread challenge. You know, every I looked around when I was done and I was like, oh shit, everybody's stuff is beautiful. Like they look like real gingerbread houses and I've got this like... You know, Venice Beach lifeguard stand. But it, it <laughs> your palm <laughs> gumdrop in sight. Right. I thought it was awesome. And I loved the palm tree especially was, was super cool. Yeah, it was so much fun. You know, that was based off like Legos when I watched like my son build Legos yeah. and he you know, the way that they would stack stuff. So it was like, okay, so what I'm not what I can't do in decorating technique, I'm gonna try to make up in creativity. Yeah. Well yeah, I mean you're plenty creative. Obviously I mean, that was a, a it was a great idea. It was mm-hmm. just so, and it was refreshing to not see a boatload of icing and gumdrops and yeah. things stuck all over it. You know, it was good to see. Something well, you want to make, you know, I, if there's anything that I've started doing in the past few years with baking, it's like, I want to make everything. I want yeah. to do it all myself. I don't want to bring in Oreos. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. <laughs> to use for decoration. I want to see what I can do with everything that I can make. And that's the, that's the most fun. It's like, how far can you take it? Right. You know, do you make, you make your own jam? You know, it used to be when I was a little kid that I would take the strawberry jam out of the refrigerator and add it to my cookies. Now I'm making the strawberry jam. Yeah. That's yeah. Well, thing. And do you grow your own strawberries then too, or that'll be the next step. That's the next and step. That's the next step is the garden. Yeah. You're making your own yeast now. Yeah. I oh, have okay. my own starter if, when it comes to bread. So, right. you know, I've, you know, you leave it out on the counter and you grow this great bacteria yeah. and you make your own sourdough bread. Yeah. Yeah, that's a whole new thing that I've just started doing. And, I mean, now that you know, like, what claggy is and stodgy is and all that stuff. <laughs> <laughs> and, by the way, you never want anything to be stodgy or claggy. Oh, no. <laughs> it's not good at all. Yeah. Uh, yeah, so, okay, you want, to, you want to do your own ingredients as much as possible. Does that include sugar, too? Like, you want to, like, process it in the way? No, it I haven't taken it that yeah. far. Okay. But people go to flour mills and they grind. You yeah. know what I mean? They do stuff like that. I think that's – I. there's only s- so much – you know yeah i don't know if you want to start breaking down the raw materials yeah you know yeah but um you know as far as you you don't buy icing you make your icing you don't buy yeah you know i make my i like to make my i don't make my own butter when i'm making cookies but if i'm going to serve bread and make a special butter i will make my own butter do you know what i like i'll do it that way but i'm not going to make all my own butter for so you're not just going to take some butter melt it down and add a herb or some kind of saltiness no i like to make my own butter i like to whip it and separate it you know the heavy cream and separate it out and then add some flavor to it i made some fudge butter recent a couple years ago whatever Mm. that's really good Mm, it's just like a chocolate butter butter. it's (laughs) all of the butters are good (laughs) any butter's good all of them i know you're in the tent it's super crazy it's super intense are you thinking about winning at all? Are you worried about what everybody else is no. doing? No, nope. you're just, just on your t- on your bench. I'm 100 percent focused on my bench. I don't care what anybody else is doing. I have no control over that, so right. it's wasted energy, right? It's just I can only control what's right in front of me. Now, how about when it comes down to judging and stuff like that, or coming down to when they announce Star Baker versus who's going home? Were you ever? Did you ever get competitive in that in those moments no. or? No, I was, I, you know, I could usually guess who was going to get it. Mm -hmm. And, you know, you feel nothing but heartache for the people that get, that have to go home and you feel nothing but joy for the people who win it. So in terms of like baking, you can cook other things. Maybe you stir fry, maybe like, are you a cook as well as a baker or? Yes. I, I like, I think it's really important that you, I mean, why would, you know, it's like. I want to be well-rounded yeah. in whatever I do. And it's, I'm an entertainer mm-hmm. and a producer. So if I can't do the entire meal, what's the point of it? Right. Do you know? So I want to start with, I 
made pizza for years. And yes, it's dough and it's similar to baking, but I love to do it. I love to make my own pasta. Yeah. I love to figure out, you know, I recently got a sous vide and started making steaks and a sous vide. Like, yeah. it, you know, my family, we all cook. My brothers, my both my mom and my dad. And my dad's a very adventurous cook. My mom was like an awesome every day, make sure you have breakfast, lunch, and dinner cook. And my dad yeah. would make Chinese food or, you know what I mean? Yeah. Do something like go outside the box. And um, it was just so much fun to do that. So it's like, I love cooking. I love entire meals and preparing them. Sorry, I'm just saying, I'm just finishing my workout today. And Ange comes out. He's like, that's her father. Ange yeah. comes out. He's like, hey, Mike, yeah, I'm going to make some shrimp scampi. You want some? <laughs> Making that for lunch. A little shrimp yeah, scampi. Yeah, my dad will just I go- said, with rice? He goes, Oh, that's a good idea. Yeah, we'll put it on rice. Yeah, I'm going to heat it up. I'll let you know when it's done. (laughs) Yeah, I mean, it's like you're just sitting around. Like, we'll be sitting around. Hmm. Did somebody just say brajol? It's like, no, but that's a really good idea. Let's go make brajol. You know, it's just we grew up every Sunday. You'd wake up and there'd be meatballs frying and gravy Uh being made. And just it's all part of. And when you say gravy, you mean like tomato sauce. I mean tomato sauce. And we're we're both. I didn't. You know, I grew up in in an Irish an Italian family, but we, we weren't I grew as, up in an Italian family. It, it didn't revolve <laughs> around food as much as, as Dan did. So I'm yeah. happy to, to kind of adopt that culture since, you know, since yeah. we've been together, but we're both impulsive that way. I mean, tell them about the time when we were watching son of, uh, was it son of Sam? What was that movie? Uh, Summer, of Summer of Sam. <laughs> Summer of Sam. And we're watching the movie and you know, it's about a serial killer yeah. and like everything. It's not the most cheery thing in the world, but there right. was a scene where they sat down. They were like in, Little Italy or something in New York and they're serving yeah. spaghetti and we paused the movie and we went and made the spaghetti. Yes. And then we came back. Because it was it. just like, oh, that looks good. We went. We need to make spaghetti we, right now. We went. We Our first anniversary, we went on vacation by mistake, I say. We went Oops. up to this bed and breakfast up in New York State oh, that was awful. Yeah. It was just, it was like. I th- we could have got murdered up there and we um i saw my first tumbleweed i think <laughs> <laughs> we were it was just this horrible bed and breakfast and we're not bed and breakfast people we're yeah. just not so we're there and it's friday you know saturday morning we got there friday night and we look at each other and we're like i can't stay here another night and mike's like but we paid for both nights i'm like and you want to make it worse by staying here <laughs> so we're both like we want good pizza so we just got in the car drove down to the jersey shore yeah and back where i'm from went yeah. where he's from and we went and got pizza it's like food is just you know yeah the cure-all for everything we're very food impressionable in our house too like if we watch harry potter, potter we're going to be making things i say we my girlfriend makes the food. <laughs> I mean, there's certain things I make, but she's just better at it. And she's got, you know, her thing that she just does so well. What's something you wish you could have made on the baking, British baking, or I'm sorry, the baking show. Great that, American Baking yeah, Show, American Holiday American Edition. Show. Yeah. Um, what do I wish I could have made? I don't even know. I, I wish we had time to make um, ice cream. Mm-hmm. Um, I wish I had, I love to play with ice cream. I like baked Alaska is one of my favorite things to make. Yeah. Um, I think a pie. I love like a really good pie. It yeah. would have been great mm. to make a pie. We need actually we need pie. I know. I'm, I, I, <laughs> we, I'm we, gonna go can make we a pie. pause. <laughs> can we pause and make a pie. Can we pause and make a pie. <laughs> <laughs> um, but uh, you know, besides stuff like that, it's just things that you just can't really. A cannoli. I wish I could have made a cannoli. Oh yeah. yeah. Um, I wish we could have deep fried some stuff. Maybe. Yeah. I mean, I say that I wish, but it just yeah, whatever. Been the it's, things that we didn't. Do. Yeah, you didn't get to do all of it. Yeah. yeah. How, what happens to all the food after you're done with it? I mean, I know a lot of it gets sampled, but where does it go? They eat it all. You okay. know, it's like there's a whole crew there and there's tons of people. It gets eaten. Yeah. You know, it's except for our queen of puddings. I think they were all so bad that nobody <laughs> went near them. <laughs> yeah, this is underbaked. I'll take some. Yeah. Uh, I've noticed that I see more macarons in the uh, store than I ever did before. It's yeah. It's got to be associated with the show. Um, I think so. I think they got really popular. I think, um, you know, there's a lot of French pastry stores that have opened up like, you know, in area where everybody's making them. I don't think, uh, I think there's a really, there's a lot of missed opportunities in macarons, you Mm. know, out there that not everybody does great ones. Right. And there's a whole process about making them and letting them sit. And there's two different techniques every like you know everybody makes french macarons but there's an italian macaron that's a little mm. bit more stable mm-hmm. and 
sometimes I would say almost better to make yeah. than that. People play with flavors. You know, Sherry Yard did, she just posted this recipe on her Instagram account for the gingerbread um, macaron because nobody ever flavored mm. the shell. It was just the almond flour. Yeah. And they would play with colors. And she introduced molasses and ginger and made, I mean, you tasted it. Mm. I made it recently for Christmas with like an apple compote in the middle. So good. Thanks, was, Sherry. Yeah, it was delicious. But it's like, so there's, you know, there's so much, even though they're everywhere, I still want to see people thinking outside the box and challenging the French traditions. I would like to see more macaroons on the show macaroons? as well. Macaroons, yeah. Yes, because they're also delicious and <laughs> or, we just don't yeah. get enough of them. You know? Yeah, well, there's macaroons, there's macarons, there's marconi, there's macaroni, <laughs> there's the macarena. There's <laughs> You can just go on and on. But. Wow, that's cool. So what's one question we should have asked you that I didn't ask? I don't know. What do you think, Mike? Any uh, questions? Yeah, yeah, yeah. This has been a good kind of overall conversation. Yeah. We love baking and eating. Baking and eating. Um, well, what's next? What's next for me? Yeah. Back to work. Back to work. <laughs> I've just, you know, there's so much. I, I, I've just learned that there's so much more to learn. And yeah. there's so many more things that I could do, get better at. And... I um I just want to keep learning. Yeah. So I just never I just don't want to stop. So it'll be more baking. I hope that I can figure out a way to help inspire people. Like the amount of people that come up to me and say, "God, I wish I could do what you could do." I'm like, "Well, just do it." Do it. You do it. The only difference between me and you is I'm doing it and you're not. Yeah. So it's like, get off your ass and do it. You know, quit bitching and get in the kitchen. That's what I like to say to <laughs> people. That's right. <laughs> I and it bake that. someone's day. I mean, you you know, it's it's a great thing. It feels good for you, but it also really makes somebody else happy. Who doesn't love a cupcake or a good cookie or a pie? I'm going to make Who doesn't things. love a bad cookie? I I'll don't eat, like bad cookies. I'll yeah. eat a bad cookie. I, I ain't won't. scared. Not anymore. Life's well, too I'm short just saying, for bad cookies. All I'm just I'm just saying that there's no, there's really it's tough to make a bad cookie. So mm. maybe I'll take a not great cookie yeah. any day. If it's homemade. Well, I mean, if that's what people are worried about, well, it's not going to be great. It'll still be oh, good. Oh, no, I agree with you. Just keep slogging away because you are you are going to make great cookies one day if you keep making them. 10,000 um, hours. 100%. 10,000 hours. Quit bitching and get in the kitchen. Quit bitching and get in the kitchen. Hey, thanks for coming on the show. Thank you. This has been wonderful. I really appreciate it.